welcome friends to this afternoon session of our one day event in austin uh before any questions come to me i don't know if there are any questions there are okay <laughs> before they come i can tell you a couple of things during the lunch break i received from one of my friends who is an expert in computational work in the science of computers and he is doing work in uh, in the silicon valley on several advanced models of uh, computer software and he sent me an article how an amoeba the smallest form of life single cell amoeba can solve computational problems better than any algorithm that we have developed and the article gives example of how he does it and, and they say that there are something like if you are traveling they call it traveler city problem they defined one of the problems where the number of options become very large for example a traveler has to go salesman has to go to several cities which city should he visit first which should he visit it depends on the distances that they are there if he has to visit just two cities he say which is the shorter one to go to go to the next one with four cities it become three ways of going but with six cities it become 360 ways with six cities it uh, it becomes three uh, even a million as you know they have lotteries here they say write six numbers you can will millions if you write the correct numbers out of 80 to pick up six numbers out of 80 people do not realize that the number of combinations is close to 400 million combinations supposing you have to write 1 million numbers is unimaginable how much the number will be we can't even trace how many zeros have to be put in but an amoeba can tell you which is the best way to go even if you have to go to a thousand cities with trillions of ways of going so they experimented with the amoeba and they placed different in the experiment they placed they know that an amoeba goes towards food and repels light so they made different channels depending upon how many cities we visit and increase the number and the amoeba had to go to put its tentacles in where the food was and repel where it's not so it very quickly it's able to find out the best combination to co co cover all the outlets and that the algorithm that we have got to calculate this thing it takes much longer than an amoeba can do it so he said this to me interesting thing that what is there in nature i said what is there in nature to have a law of probability which i mentioned in the morning or look at the bees honey bee honey bee makes a hive the honey bee has hives which are octagonal all the eight sides small size small size are made by those bees all the eight sides are equal up to the fourth decimal point they have no measuring tools where do they get this specification where do they get so accurate but they do it every year millions of birds fly several thousand miles 5000 6000 miles to go from colder climate to better warmer climate and they know exactly the route without any gps and we even lose the way with gps <laughs> how do they know how it is they have tracked those birds they put the the tracking devices even uh, and they get transmission radio transmission from the birds how they are going and they found that uh, the birds know exactly where to stop for the night which tree to stop in 
they chopped the tree the birds had a big problem which is what kind of memory can a bird hold and we are thinking we are far better than the birds and we can't do what they are doing we can't do what the bees are doing we can't do what an amoeba is doing and we think we are super intelligent then where is this intelligence coming from which is operating in nature they can't have find an answer they call it a mystery scientists say it's a mystery we are not very able to solve amoeba mystery is a mystery even for the computer scientist but if you want to solve the mystery do what i said in the morning go within yourself and discover what is the secret of life where does it come from the secret of life which creates individuated souls that contains all the intelligence that you can ever think of we are clouding that intelligence by a device given for different purpose called the mind but we cloud ourselves by confusing ourselves we don't use thinking the right way we are supposed to so we confuse ourselves and we muddle our own potential for intelligence and we have a variety of intelligent people and uh, their scale is very poor compared to the scale of one specific direction in which intelligence is being used by other living creatures so it's not the uh, they are not being trained the bees are not trained then how can they do it they have the same soul how can these amoeba do it same soul how can any living form do any unique thing same soul you can see I, my friend has a pond outside his house in chicago and there are ducks in it chicago can get very cold in winter all the lakes freeze the rivers freeze the big lake freezes so that pond also freezes i say where do the ducks go in super low temperatures minus 20 degrees fahrenheit temperature ducks are there i shall come and see the ducks on that cold day how are they surviving human beings would freeze and how are the ducks surviving so i went there and saw the ducks all assemble they keep the little section of the water warm and they dive and they bring it up and they dive and they keep a small section where they can all fit in and they all surviving there as the weather improves they scatter they swim everywhere else how do they do it where, where are they getting this training they have the soul same soul the soul expresses its intelligence in so many ways we are just fortunate that in our case the soul expressed an interest which we call seeking the truth also a function of the soul seeking does not come from anywhere else seeking the truth within yourself or seeking the ultimate truth this arises in us because of the soul soul is seeking its home true home soul is seeking its origin what is obstructing the soul seeking is only the device given to it to use a computer given to use and it has started becoming the computer the mind was given to us to use to think the way we want to think to put words in our thoughts what we like to put we were supposed to use a spiritual will to lead our life we don't need we don't use spiritual will we use mental will mental will is different from spiritual will spiritual will comes from intuition mental will comes from thinking some people say intuition is too vague because i suggested in one seminar long ago to a group of 50 people i said live one week 
by taking all decisions what your first gut feeling says every day and not what you have to what you think what is correct to do that day most of them said it is very risky to do that and gut feeling just a feeling suddenly comes it may be right or not right we have to look if it is a correct decision or not i said please just for an experiment if you can't do it for a month do it for one week so it is a one week program after one week they had an experience of life they never had before intuition was correct and the mental thoughts were not try it out this is why we messed up our own intelligence we messed up our own way of enjoying life by putting the mind first at ourselves later this intuition that comes all by itself you can't develop it mental thinking you can develop intuition is inborn because when we say we develop something it takes time to develop and time is all connected with mind but intuition is inborn in us and comes all the time we ignore it because we think all the time and don't even see what intuition says so if you can make better use you will awaken the latent intelligence of your own own self your own soul and it's a much better way to live be yourself use the mind use the mind to implement what the intuition decides mind has a big role to play because you have to use mind to think out ways to implement what you are deciding because intuition does not implement itself it tells you what's right to do it tells you what the best course what option to pick up when intuition tells us that we should use the mind now i know what is to be done how should i do it find the ways to do it plan plan a whole program with the mind how to carry it out make full use of a device given to us the human mind but don't become the mind don't say i am thinking that is me no you are using him you are you and you are using a mind to think a device given for thinking don't become the mind when we become the mind we become completely subservient there used to be an old story they used to tell called the story of aladdin's lamp they call him aladdin there we call aladdin whatever name you want to give to that young man who found a wonderful lamp and he rubbed the lamp and a genie appeared huge big genie appeared frightened the little boy but the genie said master i am your slave command what i shall do and the man, boy little boy was so frightened he said go and build a house for me in few minutes the house was ready and the genie was back house is ready command me what i shall do he said go and make a bridge go and do this the genie was so fast after time boy couldn't think what to do he said okay you do what you like then he said i am going to do this now you follow me so the boy became a slave the genie became the master boy was very sad everything now genie genie deciding and boy is carried out everywhere one day an old friend of his came a wise old friend he said why are you so sad these days he said i found a big powerful thing called a genie and i thought the genie will help because genie said the genie is my slave and i am a master but i have ran out of commands so now the genie tells me what to do so i become a slave of the genie he said don't worry i'll give you help i'll tell you next time the genie tells you something count contradict the genie and say no i want you to bring a pole from the forest bring a wooden pole now the genie bring the pole say dig it in this room here and when the pole is dug there say now genie go up and down this pole till i give you the next command so genie is stuck on the pole 
when you are ready give next command jini will do it back on the pole an example is given our mind is a genie given to us as a very powerful asset to use but we become slaves of the of the mind slaves of the genie it works so fast and now the answer given is bring the mind to step inside this house of yours in the sixth floor and go on repeating the words up and down till i give you next command so let the mind keep on repeating you have to use the mind take it off the words now read this book now do this intellectual work i have to do do my office work is done go back to up and down on the words so just example given how we can convert a slave into a slave and a servant who is supposed to work for us the mind is a servant we should use fully don't let it lie, lie idle even make it either repeat the words or work what you want to do think the right things it's, it's a wonderful way i think some questions are ready on my way ready thank you jonathan will read the question first and then hand over to me can i use my imagination to heal pain in my physical body can i use my imagination to heal pain in my physical body yes people do that the whole process of hypnotic pain relief is based on a suggestion and a suggestion has helped people relieve pain with suggestion in some countries like china and japan they are performing surgeries with no anesthesia if you make an auto suggestion pain can go away as you said that you should watch life as a drama and that we are also a part of this drama If we disagree with the action of some character connected with us, how to deal with action? As you said that you should watch life as a drama and that we are also a part of this drama and I said also one of the actors. If we disagree with the action of some character is connected with us, how to deal with action disagree <laughs> that's the script you don't change the drama just by sitting there we don't sit in the audience and change what is happening there watch be a witness don't interfere with the drama if you disagree if you, the character in which you are sitting disagrees disagree whatever is required in the context of the whole drama do it you don't interfere in it you stay in your own relaxed chair and watch <laughs> how does meditating on the self of the inner body the astral body combine with love and devotion because when one meditates within the inner body doesn't the form of the master as you know it disappear how then can you have conversations with him and express your love and devotion how does meditating on the self of the inner body the astral body combine with love and devotion because when one meditates in the inner body doesn't the form of the master as you know it disappear how then can you have conversations with him and express your love and devotion we see the master who we call perfect living master outside with these eyes as a physical body we see the same master inside with the inner eyes as the astral body same form that we have we express our love and devotion outside with a physical body with a physical body outside we express our love and devotion differently with with our sense perceptions the inner body to the inner master 
when we meditate and go beyond that, we do not disappear, nor does the master. The form of the body changes. So is the form of the master changes. The master is in the same causal form as we are and love and devotion is expressed more easily than it can be done either in the physical or in the astral plane. And about conversation. How do we have conversation? We have conversation with each other and with the master in the physical plane through spoken language or maybe written language, email, text message, SMS, whatever method you choose, language. Here, if the master knows different language, we know different language, we have little problem. We have to use a translator. I have on my, on my iPhone translation, translation to 128 languages. And I use that. People communicate with me in different languages, Slovenian language, Estonian language, Greek, Japanese language, two types of Chinese language. So when they communicate with me, I translate it with my help of a little device in my pocket. And then I write the answer in my language and translate it back into their language and send it. Not always a good translation. <laughs> sometimes I translate back to see what they translated. It surprises me sometimes. But the recipients, recipients tell me we understand what you wanted to say. So I am happy. But do you know, this is not the only way we can communicate and have a conversation. Some people have a conversation with their friends to another method called telepathy. Telepathy means that you think in your mind something you want to convey to your friend. Your friend says, got the message. It has passed on wirelessly to your friend. This telepathic communication, I don't know if you have noticed, does not require a translator. I speak in English. My friend in Germany speaks only German, does not know English. I think of a message in English in my head. My German friends understand it in German. Where did the translation take place? In telepathic communication, it's very rare. Not everybody does it. And we try to do it, we fail. Then we don't try to do it, it happens. That means it is coming from somewhere else other than a physical self. So when we have telepathic communication, how does the translation take place no matter what the language? This, the question that I am now asking, how does it happen? The answer is inside you. Go to the very first level. And you will notice that you will automatically use telepathy no matter what language you have. It is coming from there. It's coming from inside. That when we have a telepathic thing, we are getting some part of our internal intelligence being used outside. We use so much of it outside, this is one of them. In that astral plane, you communicate with people telepathically. You can speak any language words, the other person understands their language, or you need not speak. You think the other person understands, because not coming from the word you are speaking. How does this operate? Because language is merely putting into words something you want to say. The meaning is what you want to convey, not the language. So, you know the meaning you want to say, you use your language, the meaning is conveyed, not the language. That is why it doesn't matter what language you are speaking. It's a great experience at the astral plane, where you will find how this telepathic communication takes place. Since that is normal, the conversation with your master takes place the same way. In the astral plane, and same way in the causal plane, no words are uttered, the meanings are understood. That's the second part of the question. If 
we are all having our own individual experiences, how come we are having a common experience? Like, say, sitting in this room and listening to you. If we are all having our own individual experiences, how come we are having a common experience, like, say, sitting in the room and listening to you? When you have a dream at night, in the dream, 20 people are sitting around a table and having a discussion. Somebody says, you know that we are dreaming. They say, who is dreaming? We are 20 people sitting here. You say, we are dreaming? We who are 20 of us dreaming? To create this uh, discussion on the table? And there is a big ruckus about this. Big debate going on. Who is dreaming out of the 20s to have a dream? And you wake up. Only one was dreaming. What about the others? They were part of the dream. Only one wakes up. No matter how many people are in the dream. You may have a thousand people in the dream. When you wake up, only one will wake up. Not thousands. They were part of the dream. It's absolutely true here also. All the people are part of the creation here, part of the experience here. When you wake, wake up, these people won't be there. All of them won't be there? No, some will be there. Why? Because when you dream out of 20 people sitting on the table, you were dreaming, 10 you know they are good friends. When you wake up, 10 are there. Other 10 were only part of the dream. Therefore, you have selectively picked up something from a higher awareness and put it into dream and created something for the dream only. Twenty people were there in the dream. When you woke up, ten friends were still sitting there. And that's how you had a dream about the table and sitting. But ten more you created for the dream. Supposing you say ten people are more real. Are they more real in the dream? Yes, because when you wake up, they are still there. That means even their influence in the dream was more real than the ten created only for the dream because when you wake up, they are still alive. They, they are also at the higher level. Then you wake up again and find only two of them are there out of those ten. Others disappeared. So the eight who were awake when you woke up have also disappeared. So two are even more real. Because they were in the dream, they were in the wakeful state, they were in the higher state after wakefulness. Then you wake up again and find the reality. Only you and your master are there. Therefore, master was more real all the time, even right up to the physical plane. This level of reality of the experiences of human beings or people we experience is only revealed when we wake up successively. Therefore, when you say... That is this is an individual experiencing, not an individual person. Individual person is part of the dream. On the table, 20 people who were sitting in the dream, the one who was saying is it a dream is not in the body that's sleeping. The dream body, when he wakes up in a different body altogether. Similarly, when we are seeing all the crowd of people sitting here and wake up, we won't be in this body which we are talking about. It's another body in which we find that this body was created exactly for a physical experience. And we have something different for that wakeful experience. For each wakeful experience, we have a different form. And that is why that form is not related to the form that we are using in the body. It has some similarities, but not complete similarity. The dream body moves fast, follows different laws of nature. The dream body can fall from a building and not get hurt. So many people have tried it. In their dreams, they don't get hurt. In this, you get hurt. In the dream body, you can be here in Austin one minute, in Chicago next minute, looks normal. Nobody has ever questioned in a dream, why am I suddenly here? If this happened here, you would question it. The laws of nature 
in a dream are different from the laws of nature in wakeful state and the laws of nature in the astral stage are different from the laws of nature on the physical stage. Each stage has its own laws. Therefore, when you say an individual creates, it's not the human being creating it. You can't create anything. Try to create a flower here. You can't do it. Imagination is also sometimes difficult. So the creation is taking place from another form altogether, not from where we are sitting here. These are all parts of the creation we have done in a form which is sleeping. Wake up and see that form. Can someone who is not initiated by a PLM go to Sach Khan? Can someone who is not initiated by a PLM go to such current? Yes, if you want to go to such current, PLM will come and initiate him. <laughs> Definitely. When I'm exploring the astral realm in meditation, how can I quickly reconnect with the master if scary things like huge diving birds appear? When I am exploring the astral realm in meditation, how can I quickly reconnect with the master if scary things like huge, dark, diving birds appear? It's a good question because it has happened to many people. Many of my friends have had this experience. In meditation, they are exploring and they have gone, gone into negative territory. With negative experiences, monsters are appearing, frightening things are happening. And they, they get so frightened that they do not know how to get back to the master, how to reconnect. Therefore, to avoid this, perfect living masters have always, when they initiate a person or accept that person as a disciple, they give some words to repeat which are used like a mantra, but are also empowered to prevent any negative experiences. Therefore, the answer to this question is, repeat the words, master reappears and that thing will end. If birds, if scary birds are coming, repeat words, scary bird will in front of you fly away. If monsters appear, repeat words, monsters will run from you. Any negative entity will run away with the empowered words. Words don't matter, but the empowerment that takes place, takes place at a higher level. And therefore those words become different for the individual who is initiated, not for everybody. For the individual who is initiated by a perfect living master, the words become empowered and they keep negativity and negative experiences, not only in the astral plane, Physical plane, astral plane, causal plane, negativity keeps away. The master is always with the disciple. However, in the Bible, Matthew, the idea, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am also. So, how does this satsang of members differ from the master always being with the disciple. The master is always the disciple. Not everybody knows that. I am glad you know it, the questioner. However, in the Bible, Matthew, the idea of wherever two or more are gathered in my name, there I am also, is absolutely true here also. Any two disciples of a master, talking about master, gather together, master is there. Always. So Matthew is right. That when you gather together in the name of the master, that means remember the master, master is there. If more than two are there, also master is there. If a thousand are there and think of the master, master is there too. That is why it is recommended that if your mind is too frail and the mind is distracted too quickly, be with friends who are also like-minded and following the same master. And this getting together 
so that if we have the presence of the master definitely because of this principle we call it sat sang sat sang sat means the truth sang means company company of the truth company of the truth means that we are sharing the truth which for us in the physical world is best represented by that human being who is in touch with the ultimate truth while he is here with us therefore remembering such a human being remembering the perfect master getting together is experiencing the presence of the master so that is why matthew is absolutely correct that wherever two or more are there thinking of the master master is there questions how do i meditate for a longer time i tend to wander a lot once i forget about my body and how do i know what is reality and not my imagination first part of the question first question how do i meditate for longer time if i tend to wander a lot once i forget about my body if you forget your body you are meditating unless another thing has happened where you can also forget your body is called sleeping <laughs> the tendency to sleep is very strong in meditation the reason for that is that meditation requires you to become unaware of the body by staying behind the eyes at the third eye center but every night you move your location beyond the third eye center and become unaware of your body anyway sleep is a natural process we all need sleep and we all sleep and therefore sleep is a refreshing experience for wakeful experience and therefore the tendency to sleep when we meditate is very strong sometimes the tendency to sleep is very strong even when you're listening to a person talking about this I remember it was in Wisconsin we had a smaller group and I was telling them to meditate with their eyes closed I said close your eyes put your attention there after a while I felt that normally one cannot hear if you are snoring <laughs> snoring in deep sleep somehow I am able to hear my snoring I don't know how it happened right from childhood if i snore is not deep sleep i can hear it i suddenly heard myself snoring i hope i was sleeping I opened my eyes everybody was staring at me <laughs> and then i of course quickly got my wits together and i said i'm just giving an example <laughs> how even a person who's trying to demonstrate can go to sleep so tendency to sleep is there but if you are able to hold your attention third eye center not allow it to sink below you don't go to sleep now this is a special trick in meditation that when you sit in the house sixth floor of the house you make the floor of the house very strong put extra steel into it make it real concrete jump on it inside the head make sure it's very hard if it is hard you won't go to sleep if it is soft you go to sleep because the notional point of our consciousness drops during sleep and if you are meditating with alertness and with that hard floor you will not sleep you'll have actual astral experiences only therefore if you forget your body and are still there you will be having only astral experiences fly wherever you like go wherever you like it's only a starting point the starting point is there after that when you forget your body the inner body begins to function in a new space it's not the same space it's an inner space the inner space has different sky than this one this sky at night gets dark that one does not it's always lit up the twilight zone type of type of light not very bright not very thin in the causal plane when you go within the sec- inner body your second body your form disappears you are you are there your form does not 
remain like this because this form is required for distribution of these senses into five senses. The inner perception does not need it. So we don't have this form at the causal plane, but you are the same self, master the same self, and you're communicating in that form. And there, the sky changes into a beautiful golden color sky, orange colored sky. If you have seen a setting sun, which you can see easily, sun in the, in the top is very difficult to see, it's too bright and hot. But if you see a setting sun, half set, it looks beautiful, golden piece, stretch that sun all over the sky, that's the causal sky. Very often people have glimpses of the inner regions and they can know from the nature of the sky where they are. So the golden sky comes up, it's a new universe. It does not mean that you are now still stuck in the middle of the head. So you are actually stuck here in the body, yes. But you are unaware of it and you're moving into a different experience. This experience of withdrawing from the body is very similar to the experience of physical depth. When you die, I don't know how many people you have seen dying. I have seen plenty. I just turned 92. Most of my friends have died. Some of them of terminal illnesses. Some of them when I am watching them die. In the hospi hospitals, in the hospices, in the nursing homes. And when they die, they don't die suddenly in the whole body. They die extremities first. They don't know where the hands and feet have gone. They are still talking to us. Then they don't know where their legs and arms have gone, still talking to us. Then they don't know where their bottom has gone, of the tor tor because of the torso, because they think they are flying. I think I am flying in sky, I am coming, getting up. It's only an awareness of the body, bot bottom part of the body going away. And they feel levitating. They are still talking to us. And then when they cross the heart and they are unaware of this, they can't talk. For some reason, this mouth is still, eyes are moving. You know, they're trying to say something. Then the eyes become still, head is dead, brain is dead, they're gone. I've seen this process. Now, can you imagine that when we meditate, by putting attention on the third eye center and concentrating our attention there, we are going through the same process. We first don't know where our feet and hands have gone. Then we don't know where the legs and arms have gone. Then we don't know where the bottom has gone. And we are levitating. And then we are not aware where the whole body has gone. Sometimes it can happen quickly, like it can happen in physical death. Sometimes it takes very slow time and we go slowly and discover this. But when we have this experience, it is like the experience of death. That is why it's very often been called dying while living. Dying while living. In the Bible, Paul says, I die daily. He's not talking of physical death. He's talking of an experience. Similarly, mystics have said, you have to die in order to live. So dying while living is the name given to this method of withdrawal of attention to your own self. Now, the difference is that that withdrawal and death is taking place because of failure of some of the parts of your vital forces. And here you are using your attention only. And the vital forces function absolutely normally. There have been instances, in my father's case, I'll tell you, he was also initiated by the same master, my own dad. And when he, he was so keen, he had been studying philosophy in the college and he had been studying how to find I mean, metaphysics, realities and so on. He was so keen when he got initiated, he, was, he would sit all the time to just to meditate. One day, he got pulled very fast and he realized he was dying. He said, I am dying. I am just leaving the body. He stopped. He said, never more, no more meditation. This is killing me. <laughs> so he went to great master, said, your meditation I am never going to practice. It is committing suicide. I almost killed myself while you are trying your meditation. The great master said, I'll tell you some interesting things. Great master said, you know, physical death comes at any time. People are holding a cup of 
tea to drink and they die people are walking and they die people can die anywhere any time but isn't it strange statistics that nobody has ever died while meditating it's odd it's an odd statistic that people can die anywhere why not during meditation he said people do not die during meditation is just one of the methods by which the system is preserved when you have higher experiences so don't worry you will not die and he said when the withdrawal takes place your heart doesn't stop beating it beats the same way your breathing doesn't stop breathing goes the same way your blood circulation goes same way all systems in the physical body are completely intact only your consciousness has been pulled out of this vehicle into another vehicle which is inside this so that is why don't be afraid my dad said but it was a frightening experience i don't like it <coughs> then great master said supposing you actually die what do you expect he said the least i expect is you will be there <laughs> he said i guarantee i'll be there he said okay then i'll meditate <laughs> and he resumed meditation these negative experiences come but that is why i always tell my friends do not be in a rush it is not something i i want this immediately people write to me i want the radiant form asap <laughs> i said when you will get it compared to the old history of time you will notice it is asap <laughs> this life itself is so short it's an asap so we are not looking at the whole time frame but anyway i'll tell you one more instance there was a lady there were three ladies who took care of great master as sevadars we call them the three bbs bb is just a affectionate term for a lady the three bbs one was a strong one muscular and when time came who will take care of great master's wardrobe and his house and take care of his things there she said i will and she pushed the other out they were weaker than her second one was tall one little thinner but still strong she said, i'll take the kitchen i'll cook food for him so she took the kitchen third one was short and not that strong they pushed her out of both sebas so she went and sat in little hut and did some cooking of chapatis Uh, and other food for the general sangat sangat people that we general people who came to great master but out of the three she got the most benefit of meditation insight she got more experiences than the other two they also got experiences so i was very as a child they all loved me i think i used to recite poetry to them or some, i don't know what it was <laughs> but they liked so i was close to those three and i was closest to this little one because he was also in the dera our neighbor in the ashram next house was hers next was a little hut she had many experiences wonderful she taught me how to fly first time when i was young one day she you had locked herself in and we didn't hear of her for two days we said she might have died inside her hut so we knocked at the door she wouldn't open ultimately we informed great master great master said break open the door if she is dead we'll take the body and dispose of if she is alive we'll take care of it when we broke open the door this by the way happened twice in her case we had to break open the door once she was screaming because she went to hell and this time she was silent so she was not screaming so we again had to break open the door and we found she was sitting in a meditative pose but her foot had a long line of ants coming in so we saw that 
when she walked into the room, she stepped on a piece of gourd or jaggery, whatever you call it, the sweet thing, and that stuck to her foot. And the ants are eating that, and they've eaten up even part of her foot. It was a terrible sight. And she's still in meditation. So we ran to great master and said, Master, this is what's happening to that baby. He came there, looked at her, and he said, Bring Dr. Shakuntala. Dr. Shakuntala was a medical doctor, lived in a town about 15, 20 miles away in Kapoorthala, the other town, and a car was sent to bring her. So when the doctor came, now why he called doctor? Because doctor liked that master, but did not accept his teachings. She said, doctor, I'm a trained medical professional. I know about the brain. I know about psych psychological things. What you teach is not real. I don't think it's real what you teach, but it's good that people may, are happy to come to you. I also like you. I like your white beard. I like your personality. But I don't like what you teach because it's not true. So doctor always said this. So when this happened, he said, call Dr. Shikuntala. So Dr. Shikuntala came and great master said, doctor, I have a patient for you. Here this lady sitting in meditation and her whole foot has been eaten up. What is the kind of state that she can't know that so much pain has been incurred on her? That her whole foot is going? Doesn't she feel it? She said, let me examine the patient. Examine patient. She says, this patient is in a state of deep coma. It's a deep coma and please move this patient to a big hospital immediately. Great master said, but she is enjoying meditation. And the doctor said, no time for jokes, please. There is no time for joking. The woman is in deep coma. I die with this. You're talking of meditation at this time. He said, doctor, when there's deep coma, does it happen anything to the reflexes? Especially even deep coma. The reflexes all suffer. You will you test the reflexes? So the doctor took out a little hammer and was doing like this, this, so all the reflexes were right. He said, why don't you examine the other vital forces working in the body? Breathing, circulation. She took stethoscope. Heart is beating, right? Breathing is all right. Other vital things are working, function, functioning. She said, I have never seen a case like this of such a deep coma and all the vital functions are working correctly. Great Master said, don't you think that you could be meditating? Please. This is a case I have not known, but it has to be treated immediately before this woman dies. Please remove her immediately to Lahore, to the big hospital. Great Master said, let me ask her if she's meditating or is she just in coma? He said, he said, BB, will you open your eyes? BB opened her eyes. <laughs> he said, what are you doing? He says, I was roaming around in the astral and causal planes. Only after that incident, that Dr. Shikuntra became a disciple of Great Master and got initiated. Several things like this I watched with my eyes. And I've seen that we can't understand these things. We do not understand how the physical body operates, how the inner self is part of this body at this time. Otherwise, we won't have sense perceptions. How the causal body is not separate. It's part of us now. That's why we can think. The soul is not separated. It's part of it. Otherwise, we won't be alive. It's so simple. We are alive because of the life principle the soul is in. We are thinking because we have a mind in us. And we are able to have a sense perception because we have a astral body. And we physically have matter in us because we have a physical body. But we think that these are all part of physical, material thing. And that the brain is creating all this. Is a nervous system. It's a physical system that's doing it. But when we raise our consciousness to those levels without the outer cover and discover the nature of experience possible for us, when we discover our own age in the astral self with several thousand years, when we discover our own causal mind 
has an age which it can remember of several million years. When we discover our soul is immortal, was never born and never dies. When these things are discovered by ourselves, then we realize this physical body was merely a cover. And we thought that all the functions going on in his body were just because of physical brain and spine and nerves and all that. You have to have a personal experience to get over this. Empirical science has defined itself that what is empirically true is what is true outside. Not subjectively. Subjective, they think, is brain. It's psychological. And therefore, they say the whole thing is being created by complex functioning of the brain, which they have not fully understood even till today, how the brain functions. Every day there are new theories about how the synaptic nerves were, how they, they took pictures. Now they take pictures of the synapses or the pathways that exist in the nerves in the brain. And they took pictures when a man thinks rapid actual electronic movements, electric movements, not electronic, electri electric movements take place from one ganglion to another in the brain. And they're all connected one with the other, depending on the thought. But when you have an intuitive feeling, it lights up at different places without any connection. They've got pictures of this, of the differences. Now, is the brain doing it or the brain is merely registering what is happening? They have no idea. They just devise a method by which they can connect the brain of two, three people. They, they connected three people. The news is there. They connected the brain of three people so each one can see the thought of the other. How is it physically possible? They are experimenting. They are hitting against these truths that exist inside. But the definition they have given of empirical science, empirically true if it is outside provable. Empirically true if there is repeatable. Empirically true if everybody can get it. There was a scientist at Harvard University. He used to work in a lab on the sixth floor. So he used to have very delicate instruments. And uh, he would come to my talks and have a very sarcastic look. What is he talking about? He has no idea. We know the scientific truth about this universe. And he's talking made up, made up stories. I could see that was his thoughts. I sometimes put a stash leg in front to show scorn for what I'm saying. I noticed it. And one day he said, why do you compare what your research is showing with, as scientific research? There's no science involved. You have not set up any research institution to research it outside like we do. I said, doctor, I've seen your research lab. Why do you keep the windows closed? I notice you keep the windows closed. In a normal room, you open the windows. He says, my instruments are very sensitive. I have to keep the windows closed. I said, my instruments are also very, in my lab, are very sensitive. But they happen to be in a different kind of lab. The lab is my head. I keep windows closed. So my things are sensitive. I said, do you publish your uh, reports to everybody? Oh, yeah, we have books. I said, many people have done the same research I'm doing. They publish books also. I'll send you a list of books that you can read about what happened inside. Where's the difference? But I'm able to prove what I'm seeing. I said, so am I able to prove what I'm seeing. It's applicable to other scientists. We peers review each other. I say, you come with me and I'll review with you. But use the right lab. Don't use the wrong lab. Don't use a lab outside when look at, you are experimenting with something inside. We had quite a banter. But, you know, this is they have a handicap that the empirical research has to be done with some known assumptions. The assumptions themselves are wrong. Therefore, the, the whole research goes wrong. Assumption, time is there, which is wrong. Time is created. Space is there in which we can do work. Wrong, it's created. 
and who is saying they are wrong the scientists themselves they are saying there was no space or time before the big bang we were there who is saying people like albert einstein the great scientist people like stephen hawking who just died stephen hawking has been spending his whole life on finding the origin of this universe where did it come from and a big problem is coming which i predicted 50 years ago when they came up with a very big way with a bang there is a big bang that took took place and brought this universe into existence i said how do you know there was a big bang they said because we have seen all these galaxies all these stars moving away from us they are expanding our space is expanding it's an expanding universe over several years we have seen the rate of expansion is a accelerating rate we know exactly at what rate is expanding and what the rate of acceleration is so we have been able to work backwards naturally if something is expanding you can also work backwards so we worked backwards at the same rate at which is expanding and it came to 13.6 billion years ago this expansion must have started so there must have been a singularity from where the big bang came and expanded into our universe where we are sitting here i said that's very good but do you know that you cannot see what happened there why not i said because to see we need light light has a speed at which it travels light travels but 182 186 miles per second whatever the speed of light is when we look at the sun the sun we are seeing is not there now the sun was there 8 minutes ago because the light of the sun took 8 minutes to reach our eyes the nearest star which we see is one light year away that means we are seeing the star as it was one year ago we cannot see anything in the sky which is happening now nothing maybe a little bit of planets which take only few minutes to come no stars we have developed telescopes which can see far first telescope could see a million light years away and the scientists accepted what we are seeing happened million years ago so study of distance became a study of history now recently they developed a telescope placed in space hubble chandra they have got another telescope coming which can see almost 10 billion light years away according to the calculation of the big bang the universe started 13.6 billion years ago very soon they'll have a telescope that goes to 14 billion light years away they should be able to see the singularity anyway if they see further into the sky they should see a smaller and smaller universe if it is growing from singularity they should smaller every time they have a better telescope they see a bigger universe i predicted 50 years ago this problem will come to them and haunt them how is it possible universe is expanding and how come when we go to the past is still expanding even more these scientists especially stephen hawking he began to think of his answer before that he he said maybe we are not one universe we are in multiple universes so multiverse multi universe theory he brought out before he died he died recently and he gave an interview the last one and he great he says a great scientist he gave an interview and he said that i cannot imagine that even time did not exist when everything we are measuring in terms of time then what could have happened when time was created at the big bang and his theory last theory was there was imaginary time he says we had imaginary time before physical time started and then he defines very interesting he said real time is determined by our clocks 
time time pieces real time is determined by our calendars imaginary time is what we feel what we experience and he gave the same example supposing we are sitting have a good time and we feel 15 minutes have passed we look at the clock or two hours have passed or we are having we are very sad and crying i have been crying for an hour you find you only cried for 5 minutes <laughs> there is subjective experience of time and there is an objective clock time he said the subjective experience of time is imaginary time pre existed the big bang quite a new novel thing but i agree with him because when you say imaginary time we are talking of the imaginary state which is called the astral plane and the astral plane has always pre existed before the physical plane and the multiple universe is also correct and if you go within and have the ability to travel and fly anywhere at high speeds much faster than the speed of light you can see everything that is there in the physical and astral world they are not trying this they are looking at a small small speck of creation and try to find answers to the big questions go within you will find the answers to the big questions thank you very much for listening to me again and i give you my great master's blessings for coming here i will meet a few people now who have not met me before and spend a few minutes with each of them and i hope one day again i'll get an opportunity to come to austin and see many of you who are from austin and those who are able to travel i hope to see them at other events that take place especially the event which is the most important in my life called the bandara of great master actually it's a celebration bandara bandar means abundance a bandara mean the celebration of abundance we have so much abundant grace on which date 2nd of april each year because on 2nd of april 1948 great master shed his human body In other word died are we celebrating his death have we told call anybody death as a celebration of abundance why are we calling it like that because those who were initiated by him they found that physically he died and he appeared before them i am not dead in his radiant inner form he was present more than when he was when he was physically alive so that is why we think that this was a great opening for his disciples and we love to celebrate that day and i always love to invite my friends to celebrate with me and this time the celebration of bandara will be in menominee and jonathan who was reading the questions he can give you more information about that event and some of you who can make it i'll be very happy to see you again thank you very much once again all the blessings